so it's really nice yeah <laughs> beautiful idea and yeah. you're from tunisia right yes tunisia in the north of africa yes Thank yes, you, yes. and okay. then uh, we met veronica from exco that has a wonderful and big group in Mexico and other countries in Latin America. So would you like to talk a little bit about it, that? Please, Veronica. Okay. Uh, well, uh, for everybody, uh, our, we, we, we are a group, uh, I call <laughs> uh, name is the Creativos. The Creativos, we are uh, uh, people from teachers, most of all, from different levels. Uh, I'm from kindergarten, and we have people from uh, primary school, high school, university, even in post uh, um, university at the doc doctors and different people. And this is, uh, I think, uh, the, the meaning of work together because uh, we want to share what we, we know. If I, I, I love to make things and I love to make caps. I always, I, I'm not using my cap now, but I, we always use a cap. And this cap needs uh, to be representative of the meaning of the work we are doing. If we are doing scratch, we have in our cap things of scratch. But if we are uh, in the group of makers, because we have a group of makers in Mexico, the name is Hacedores, and uh, if we uh, are working with makers, I use my caps with many things about the makers. And um, uh, this is uh, one of our uh, things we were all, only uh, in everywhere we we can uh, show who are I we are because we are wearing suits or things about the meaning of the work and with a lot of color with a lot of jokes with a lot of uh, friendship and um, I think. Uh, you need to be a, a point of um, happiness with your students. Uh, you need to be the meaning of what you can do if you are happy when you are doing something. Oh, and Veronica, I'm sorry, but now uh, uh, I see that Eve and Lula are uh, with I, us. I I'm going to to talk them uh, uh, about uh, if they, I'm, I'm going to talk them what is happening with them. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm so happy that we have Eve here today. <laughs> Eve from France, Montpellier. Um, please introduce yourself, and then Lula, please. Hi, Lula. Lula is from Mexico. She works with Veronica too. Please, if it's with you. Okay, C can you hear me? Yep. yep. Yeah, I can hear you. So hello everyone, so my name is uh, Yves. Uh, so yes, also we, we met with uh, Eloisa during this uh, uh, MOOC, so LCL, Learning Creative Learning. It was uh, a few years ago. Uh, 2013. Tw 2013, yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, and then we met in France because uh, Eloisa came to, to France uh, and then you, you created this group. So myself, I'm based in Montpellier in France. Um, I'm not a teacher uh, or professor, I'm an engineer, uh, but I'm a member of an association uh, with which we, we give uh, kids uh, some uh, yeah, courses on computer, computer science, mainly with uh, Scratch, Arduino, processing different tools. Uh, we go, uh, so we have our own uh, venue uh, and we, we, we welcome kids uh, once a month. Plus we have uh, additional uh, events. Uh, we, we go to schools, we go to uh, libraries. So it depends and we participate to events. Um, so uh, global events. So whatever we 
confined uh, to, to, to get in touch with the, the local community. We have a lot of uh, active people in, uh, in Montpellier um, around, uh, I would say, IT for kids. So I'm part of uh, an association. Okay. Beautiful. Mm. Yves, I, 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 can you hear me? Hi, Yves. Yes. yes. Yep. Okay, Hello. good. <laughs> Welcome to Abuja. Can I say that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Abuja is in Nigeria. And uh, I, I think I chatted with you two Ooh. days ago. Yes. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we are friends already you know, on Facebook. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, today is very special. We have Lula and have Ishwis from Taiwan. Hi, Ishwis. Okay. So, Hi, Lula. Uh, okay. Hi. I am so sorry, so sorry that I'm always so absent, but really, really, I don't work 100%, I work 200%, so every time I have the chance to be around, I like to say hello. I work in a place called Jalapa, Veracruz. Jalapa, it's in the coast of the Gulf of Mexico, but it, it's not in the sandy beaches, but in the beautiful mountains. And um, I work, well, I work with, with uh, Veronica. Veronica is my, my leader for Educreativos. And she always, I always follow all her crazy ideas and, um, <laughs> and do some other ideas too. But still, I, ha we, I work in a school, a K-12 school. And um, we have created a concept that is called uh, technology, creative technology spaces. It's like a combination of the, the old digital world with computers and the makers, the maker movement philosophy. And we do that with the kids. And of course, Scratch is one of our main, main um, subjects to work with, but we also work with the extensions of many other things like Arduino, Raspberry, now microbeat and whatever comes to our hands to work and the kids are always willing to experiment so there we are working and of course every time i can be around i have not answered um today i'm going to check all my emails i have an invitation i think from ives um yes, so yes. i will i will answer so sorry <laughs> it's the starting the starting of the school year is so hard but yep. I'm here, and every time you need me, I'll be around. I'll try to be around. Ah, uh, there you go. Uh, Veronica has her her cap on. <laughs> okay. She loves to to wear her yeah, cap. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get mine, so that okay. we are. Well, uh, that's all. I'm, I'm, that. Well, I'm a computer science engineer, but I I'm just a person. Lula, that's all. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lula. It's, uh, you're nice. So you seem to be like everybody, like Yves, yourself, Veronica, and Sandy. Sandy is still there? Yes, yes, yes. Sandy is still there. So you're welcome, uh, uh, Lula. And uh, I guess I can say welcome to Abuja. I'm in my my personal office in Abuja, and you're, it's, I'm excited to meet everybody here. I'm excited that. Uh, that you are taking your time out to listen to what I am going to say. I'm going to learn a lot and I'm going to share a lot today as well. And at any time, Heloise allows me to start, I'll introduce myself even better. It's a pleasure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, we have Yishui Shen from Taiwan. Uh, I'd like him yeah. to, to introduce himself, please some few words Hi, before Anthony starts okay 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 fine okay. i'm here uh, from taiwan and we are beside for uh, china <laughs> okay uh we we in the uh, taiwan's uh, education for a uh, scratch we use uh, the programming for uh, uh junior high school and <laughs> uh okay I'm, my english is not very well sorry <laughs> no worry, uh, no worry. Or, i'm understanding you yeah. so go ahead yeah i understand <laughs> you uh, he okay. does a wonderful work there besides 
he is very young. He has a wonderful group and they do a lot of stuff there, isn't okay. it? So, oh, today yeah. we are about introductions. Maureen from the United States and Maria Beatriz, an Italian who lives now in... In the United Sweden. States, sir. Sweden. Okay. So, uh, Maureen, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Buongiorno. Aspetta, aspetta, Maria Beatriz, dove si parla? Grazie. Uh, Maureen, could you please? Sure. Hi, I'm Maureen. I'm in Massachusetts in the USA. I am a tech integration specialist at an elementary school, and I have um, a makerspace at my school. So that's what I do. Okay, Maureen. I can't. Maureen. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I see Maureen now. Okay. How are you, Maureen? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, sorry, I can hear you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. And now, Beatrice, please introduce yourself. I'm sorry for being, in, uh, I'm late. No problem. We, we're doing the, the introductions. I am. We have so Adele, we have yeah. Eve. We have a, a no, I had problem have with my mobile. Yes. Sorry. Um, hi, I'm Beatrice. I'm now living in Sweden. And uh, I am a math teacher, mathematical teacher in high school. And uh, I, I am part of a maker movement in Italy. I founded a maker with my family a maker space in the library. That's all. <laughs> yeah, good. Hi, uh, Maria. How are you doing? Welcome. Fine. To Thank you very Welcome. much. It's uh, like I said before. Uh, you came in, and this is also for uh, uh, for the other, uh, those of us that just came now. Uh, it's an honor being here and meeting fantastic people, yourself, everybody. I'm proud to be, I'm very pleased to be in your midst and I'm pleased that you, you took this time out, short time to, to hear what we're going to say, I'm going to say, and uh, what uh, we will be discussing. So you're welcome. Welcome to Abuja. I'm in Abuja. Okay, I think now we can start the presentation, Anthony. Okay, okay. Okay, so thank you, um, let's go for it. Okay, so thank you, everybody. Um, good afternoon. It's about, uh, it is precisely 323 in Abuja here. My name is Anthony, as you know, and my, my full name is Anthony Chibo Christopher. Uh, my last name is a compound name, Chibo Christopher. My first name is Anthony, I am a Nigerian. I'm an economist. I, uh, I am a, an economist and a consultant in strategic management and planning. I also lecture in Switzerland in the Swiss Business School. I lecture in the same thing, economics and strategic uh, management. I, um, I, am not, I am a teacher, but I admire, I, I don't, I'm not a teacher to small, I mean, children of younger ages, but as you will, I will explain, uh, I have come to understand that my passion to change developing countries for the better uh, is anchored on actually getting the best education for children. When I say children, I mean children from the ages of three all the way to about 15. And so I, I am very, very, uh, I admire those that work with children of that age. And that is how I got to, to, to meet Heloisa because I was monitoring her work on Facebook and her publications on Scratch. And I was so attracted to it and I asked to be her friend and the rest is history. We've been friends from then. Here am I talking to people from different parts of the world and I am grateful for that. So... I, today, I will be speaking on 
what other nations need to know about Africa's education and Africa's development. Um, why is that important to me? Because many people really don't know much about Africa. It takes, I, keep, I tell my students that it takes, you have to be in Africa to understand Africa. And there's another thing you have, you have to experience Africa to understand Africa. And this is, this is, a, this is a very important uh, a point that I'd like to introduce here because most of what I would be saying is also relevant for other developing nations. Uh, the history of the world has, has, um, has a lot of similarities. One of the similarities you will know is colonialism. Many parts of the world, apart from Europe, were colonized. Now, there's a, lot, there's a serious relationship between colonialism and the kind of education the colonized countries have. And there's also a very serious link between the kind of education uh, the colonized countries have and their present development. There is a very direct link between what education is we are, we, are, we are giving our children today and the kind of development that we are experiencing uh, versus the kind of de development we think we should be experiencing. And that is valid to most developing countries, even outside uh, uh, Africa. Uh, I, ask you, I will ask you right now to kindly give me about 15 minutes to just talk, and then there will be uh, uh, more time for questions, and of course the questions will shape what, what we say. So thank you for logging in, and um, let me start. You see, I'm in Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria is right at the heart of Africa. It's in the west coast of Africa. It's at the Gulf of Biafra. And... Um, most of what I'll be introducing to you about Africa will be from the outlook point of Nigeria. And that's very okay. I'll tell you why. Because if I can share something here, I'm not used to Zoom yet, so be patient with me. Um, let's see. I would like to share something with you. And it's a very important point of why I am sharing Africa from Nigeria. And this would be it. Let me maximize it here. Yes, I learned it. And then I can share it here. Can everybody see that? Yes. You can see that? It's Good. Perfect. Thank okay, you. this is why it's very relevant. I start from Nigeria. Uh, we all know who Nelson Mandela is, I'm sure. Now, Nelson Mandela has said this in 20, 2013. The world will not respect Africa until Nigeria earns that respect. The black people of the world need Nigeria to be great as a source of pride and confidence. Now, you see, um, yeah, sharing stop. Nigeria is the most populate, populated nation in Africa. Every seven people you meet, Every seven people you will meet in, from African origin, one of them will be a Nigerian. Uh, it has the largest economy in Africa. Uh, it has an economy of, as of three days ago, or four days ago, it has an economy of about 539 billion. And the uh, second largest economy is South Africa, with about 300, no, sorry, 432. You can see there's a big gap. And it has to do with a, the with a large population. Uh, if I'm, am I going too fast? No? No, no. Okay. That's okay. okay. So the large population, we have about, it's, it's, it's about 190 people, 90 million people that are Nigerians. And um, this country, Nigeria, right at the heart of Africa, has a very thriving middle class. So here am I telling you. One, I have just told you it has a large population. Two, I have just told you that it has the largest economy in Africa. Three, I've told you that it has the largest middle class 
in Africa. And I can go on and on. I can tell you one more thing for the Americans here. Uh, there's a study that came up from Rice University supported by the UNDP that says that Nigerians are the most educated migrant groups in the United States. Uh, it's important to know this because I'm trying to give this introduction about Nigeria so you understand why Nansel, Nansel Mandela would say that if Nigeria doesn't make it, then Africa is not making it. There is no point talking about African education. There is no point talking about African development if Nigeria is not going to get it right. So if I'm going to be talking now about African education and African development, I have no other choice or little choice but to, to give the example of the Nigerian situation and talk about it and talk what I think about it and expose to everybody what I think about it and uh, expose what I think can be done and also expose what I think other developing nations, Nicaragua, um, the Seychelles, uh, what's the name of Myanmar, India, parts of India, what they can probably learn from the Nigerian uh, situation. So I would also like to share another document like i said anytime it comes to this please everybody be patient i'm not uh, i'm used to skype but i understand this is much better so look at this i think i mentioned something like this before and i would share this nigeria is a diverse country of 170 million about that this is about some years ago now we are about probably between 180 and 170 million we have over 400, definite, uh, 400 different ethnic languages. It is often called the giant of Africa because one in every seven Africans is in Nigeria. I mentioned, something, I mentioned that uh, before. Now, uh, we, we, we were colonized like every other country or almost every other country in Africa. And it is important to note that I'd like to give a picture of where our development is. Nigeria, for instance, and this uh, Nigeria has the sixth, I don't want to interchange them. We have the seventh largest deposits, workable deposits of oil in the world. We have the 10th, yes, yes, yes. We have the 10th largest deposits of gas reserves in the world. Now, I've said a lot of positive things. The money is there, okay, because we have oil. Uh, we have the population. We have the largest population. What I'm saying is representative of Africa. I'm just, I explained why I'm telling you about the Nigeria because I have to bring it down to, to, to a particular place. However, the Nigeria is not meet, Nigeria has about 36%, and some people say 40% of its population living under the poverty level. Now, uh, about, now this may make you sad because you're all teachers. What I'm about to say now will make you a bit sad, but you see, one about 6.5. I'm approximating 6.5 children out of 10 are not in school in Nigeria. Yes, they're not in school. It's a very large population, and Nigeria is not the cities. Nigeria is the, is the rural countries. Nigeria is the north of Nigeria. Nigeria is the south of Nigeria. And about six to six, six and a half people, six and a half children out of 10 are not in schools. And the number is increasing. But yet, Nigeria, as you said, is the giant of Africa. Nigeria has a leading role. It's the dominant economy in Africa. Nigeria is definitely the most dominant country in, in West Africa. Everything West African is, is Nigerian. We have seats here and there. But Nigeria's development is not at par with its potential. And I am saying this is also representative that Africa's development is not at par with its potential 
And I am saying today that the, if, you may, if you want to use one word to explain why, it's education. Simple and short. It's the education. Now, let's go back a little. I mentioned about colonialism. And uh, if I may be fast, because if I'm really going to take... Today, the education system we know of scratch, we, we know of STEM, the, I'm sure the STEM system we have, uh, none of the education that the children in Africa get have an indigenous input. It has, always been, it, ha it has always been right from the 1930s, from the 1870, uh, 18, uh, from 1878. When the colonialists came, of course, the, 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 the aim was not to educate the, the local population. That was not the aim. The aim was to colonize and take the raw materials from here to wherever it was going to go to and for whatever reason. So the education system was never set up. And then when it came to about 1938 to 1941, there was an education system set up. But what was it for? It was set up so that the local population can communicate with the colonialists. That's all. So that there could be a, the, some people that could speak the colonialist language and they would be able to, to communicate between the colonialists and the local population. Now, why is this important? Why what I'm saying is important is that nothing has changed. It's still the same curricula today. The aim of the education now is not, oh, I will pause. I would like to, um, I'd like to, to define what I think education is for. I think that education is a process concerned with people's capacity in a defined area, Africa, as in this case, over a defined period to manage and induce positive change, to predict, to plan, to understand and monitor change and reduce or eliminate unwanted or unwarranted change. In fact, education in the nutshell is to the purpose of education is to empower the educated to be able to control their environment for their own benefit. Maybe I should repeat the last part. Education, the purpose for education is for a particular kind of people to be able to control their environment, manipulate their own environment for the benefit and advancement of their own course. Now, if that is the case, then Africa does not, and many developing countries do not have that kind of education right now. And the only time they get that kind of education, and maybe now you understand, is when they go out to foreign universities or foreign high schools, because the education that that is happening here is not an education that can foster any innovation. It's, a, I don't know whether you're familiar with the word, a cram, cram, when you cram something, is anybody, you cram it, you, you, you know it by heart, you recite it by heart, but you're not part of it. Your culture is not represented in it. If your culture is not represented in it, then how are you going to innovate in it? And if you're not going to innovate in it, how are you going to develop? You're always going to be catching up. You're always going to be, you know, um, if you didn't contribute anything to coding, I'm trying to give a, an example, then how are you going to innovate in coding when you're always going to be learning coding at the level of what other people have just introduced? And so that's, that's, that's our, that's the African, uh, uh, situation now from my point of view and it may sound very sad but guess what it's not it's not as bad as i, I have uh, i have uh, i have made it why because just last week 
I'm, like I said, I'm an economist. I'm very active. Uh, I'm very active in African development strategies. And there was a workshop. It's a, a closed workshop where we, we introduced um, 14 high school students from Nigerian secondary, we call high school secondary school. We introduced uh, 14 secondary uh, children to um, entry level code, coding. So that's why I was excited when I heard that uh, Adele was, was doing a workshop. We had just finished that in about two weeks ago. And what we did was that each person had a project and each person was supposed to, to uh, use a basic level of coding to innovate some kind of solution that he or she felt would progress he or her, his or her community. And we were pleasantly shocked at the results. Nobody, we, 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 we compared, nobody, the, the solutions had nothing similar with the solutions you would get in most of the developed countries. They were, talk, they were coding while people were talking about controlling robots. These children were coding on how to, to, to control water systems, on how to use solar energy, enhance the power of solar panels, code the computer so that the solar panels would always turn on the water systems at the right time when the village needed water. And this made my point. What is in the consciousness of children in Africa is how to develop their environment. But if you were to take these same children and to check what they are actually doing in school right now, please remember that the workshop has nothing to do with their schoolwork. We just introduce them to coding, show them how they could use C-hash, C-hash in the basic level to control some instruments, and told them, okay, set up some solutions for that. And these solutions went straight to water and power. Do you know why? Because that's what's lacking, water and power in their villages. But in school, what are these same students doing in school? They're studying European history. They're studying maths, which is very important, we understand, but they're not doing anything related to what is needed for Africa right now to develop. And I am saying in the most humble manner, and I will entertain a lot of questions, a lot of things will, will come up. Uh, I would say in the, in the most humble manner that until developing countries, including Africa, begin to, without fear, expose the children directly to education, that would solve their problems immediately, even if they're five year old, even if they're 14 year old, it will trigger innovation. It will, it will surprise them and let the children innovate and, and, and take it from there. And there's a lot of things I could say, but uh, I want to share one more thing. In the backdrop of what I've just said, I just want you to look at this. After all I have told you about the education and the positive and the negatives, just take a look at this. Uh, yeah, hold on, please. Take a look at this. I think it's here. And I will share this with you. Small, but it will work. And I just mentioned this. Can we all see this? Is it too small? I can enlarge it, yeah. So I mentioned this and you can see there's a disconnect between these figures here. It gives the wrong impression. There's a big disconnect between this. This is as at four days ago and what I'm talking about. And I could go, uh, if you allow me, I could go on and on, but I would end, excusez-moi. I do not know why. Uh, okay, good. 
stop share. Um, Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. it's gone now. Okay. So I, I want to say one more thing and then I will, uh, because I've touched on so many things and uh, some sensitive, some, I want to just uh, say, and this, what I'm about to say is valid for all, all uh, developing countries. The purpose of education is to, one of the purpose of education is to produce useful citizens, especially from the youth, especially from three-year-olds, especially from five-year-olds, especially 10-year-olds. This is where it starts. If you, this is where the, 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 I'm talking to a lot of teachers, so you're, you're experienced in this. This is where the whole magic of development starts in the education of the children. Now you can only produce useful citizens if he or she is educated enough to be aware of his or her environment and is capable of dominating the environment. I mentioned that. At this point, right now, developing countries are not producing education that enables their children to dominate their environment. It can be done. People like us are writing about it. Some people are listening. Curriculums have to be changed. We have to be brave enough. We will be brave enough. Um, other developing countries should also be brave enough, but that's where we are uh, right now. And um, right now we are training people that are trained to cope or live under an environment that they have no control over. That's what's happening now. They do not see a link between the education they get and how it empowers them to change the environment they have. Once education can be tailored towards that, and I gave an example, there isn't too much scientific, uh, too much thinking to be done. Saddle the children with their everyday problems and inspire them to innovate to solve them. And I think we will be, we'll be, we'll do very well. So uh, people, thank you for listening to me. I have a lot more to say, but I think because of time, I'd like to listen to and entertain many questions. Thank you so much, Maria, Eloisa, uh, Sandy, and everybody. Thank you. Okay, but we have a lot of questions. <laughs> I know, I know, that's why I kept it short. <laughs> okay. So, um, it's, I think you point out a lot of import, very important questions. Yeah. And for sure, we have a lot of exchange here. Before that, I would like to, to say that we have uh, Wolf and Sislani from Austria and Samuel, Samuel Rodriguez from Mexico. Um, please, Wolf and um, Okay. Hello. Uh, Hello. If you want to introduce yourself with some few words. Hello. I'm Wolfgang. Nice to meet you all. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, I'm Hello. from Austria. Hi. Okay. I'm, I'm the one behind Pocket Code, which is uh, like Scratch, but for smartphones. Okay. Did you, did you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I did. So but I can't is, see you yet. Oh, really? I love pocket code. <laughs> okay, Wolfgang, Wolfgang, I've seen you now. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so pocket code is for teenagers, and it's it's very similar to Scratch, but it works on smartphones. It's also free and nonprofit and a free open source project. So, yeah, that's basically it. So far, um, we also have a Scratch converter included. So it's possible to uh, transform regular Scratch projects into uh, Catrobat projects. Catrobat is the overall um, project name. Pocket Code is one of our, uh, of our apps, but we have several other apps as well. And uh, yeah, I'm from a university 
So my research focus here is on how to get more girls, teenage girls into coding. Because this in Europe, this is really a problem. Like in our schools, we have only 1% of uh, female students choosing IT or computer coding. So yeah, but it's uh, currently it's translated to uh, 47 languages, uh, including Kiswahili. And yeah, so this is one of the things. It's also possible, like in Scratch, to switch the language on the phone independently of the language of the phones. So if the phone, even if the phone does not support Kiswahili or another language, it still, if it's translated, can be changed inside the app. Yes, it, I'm so happy that Wolfgang is with, for the first time with us, in the session, <laughs> with us in the session. I'm very grateful for that. And I hope that he came and present his work that we were waiting for a long time for. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Great. Yes. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us today. And we have also Samuel Rodriguez from Mexico. Uh, would you like to say hello? And then we go for the questions and discussions, okay? Thank you, Pohan. Okay, yes. go on. Okay. Thank you, Eloisa. Hello, everybody. I am Samuel Hi. Rodriguez. Hi, Anthony. Adel. How are you? Hola. Fine, are you? How are you? How are you, Rodriguez? Fine, and you? I'm doing very well. Okay, I'm thank you. Fine. Sorry, so but much. I entered to the conversation later, um, but I, I uh, listen about the Anthony. Uh, it's very interesting the information about the uh, yeah, about the education in the Nigeria and about the economics information. Maybe yeah. we have don't have a lot of information, but I think like this invitation is to 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 have more uh about the different countries and i am very happy to meet in this conversation today thank you thank you um rodriguez i'm pleased to meet you it's an honor to have met you like i said i'm very excited i'm going to learn a lot to do especially from your current questions too thank you thank you yeah so who wants to start Okay, <laughs> Lola was faster, <laughs> so go for it. Cool. <clears throat> well, thank you so much for what you have told us. But, you know, I teach modern contemporary history right now for my okay. senior high. And just, just right now, next week, we're starting imperialism. In so, what, Perry? Imperialism. Imperialism. Oh, okay. Imperialism. Okay. Yes. So okay. what you just, what you, everything you were talking, everything you were saying, I even take um, photographs, I mean, implement, um, like the press, the, the screens to show my students um, what you were saying and what you were sharing. So it, it is, it is a great opportunity to, to listen to you because the point of view that you, you were mentioning gave me like a whole thing to turn around next week that I am going to go deep into African yeah. continent. And it would be an honor if possible, if you could talk to them. No problem. The problem is part of the change. We need to, I, I, I know it's, uh, it's, it's something that has to be done. I was, I, I don't mean to, I was, I just a short thing because I may forget. I, I, Sometimes you think that what you found out through your research is, uh, is, is given. Then you, uh, you share it with a few people and you find out that it's so helpful to them. And uh, I found that out that what I have to say, I'm a student of history. I love history. I, can, I, 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 I respect, it's my best subject. And uh, I, I, I know a lot about that. So if you invite me to talk about this topic anywhere, I will, because it will bring about change anyway. For me, it's a great opportunity and for all my community, because it's from your point of view. 
no, from the point of view of the history. So, <clears throat> the, the, of course, you said a lot of things, but what called most my attention was the view from your stu from the students that you talked to that they're they're minding about how to solve local problems in their yeah. communities yeah. regarding to ecology. Um, I think that is so so important. And we we even though in Mexico we're we're also well I wouldn't say well like in a transition underdeveloped to develop mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but with a lot of corruption uh the students don't don't care about that part so it would be amazing if if you keep going with that and communicating everybody so i just wanted to think and if I, you, I can get your email so i i can we can get organized definitely. students definitely. And maybe definitely some if if all our friends can join would be great because yeah. i mean the community here with eloisa we can organize that it would be wonderful uh, because you see uh, i was talking to anthony yesterday uh, this group what we do together is a big experiment it's the opportunity of learning not from news from books uh, but from the people who real uh, lives that so, for instance, about uh, talking about imperialism or colonization, we have people here from America who have been colonized by Portugal, Portuguese people, Spanish people, and we study everything of this here. And uh, people from the United States who are had a totally different colonization set because well they were colonized by english people and we have europeans here that maybe doesn't study very much about colonization or colonized countries and the colonization yeah. in europe uh, in africa was later it was 19th century and ours was in 60th century so how we we studied this difference too uh so it's interesting and i'm wondering uh what in china and taiwan they know about that so mm -hmm. it's we have here the opportunity to exchange these ideas these points of views for people that are very curious very uh, always wanting to learn not are those the most of us are about um have it backgrounds uh i think that what put us together is those are those ideas that you talk about about improvement about education about making the difference innovation and things like that and the so, passion to learn and to teach yeah yeah true okay thank you this is the philosophy <laughs> how could i say so i i wonder what uh, in china do you is the, this anything about colonization in africa or america uh, are you talking of the uh, the type? Yeah. Go ahead. In, in school, do you study and think about in history about the colonization in America or Africa? Do you have these subjects at school? Oh. I I know I know your mean, but I don't know how to. I I I want to suggest something because I I I feel everybody is very very well. So, uh, I I just uh, I just for a uh very very uh very uh. uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, no problem. If you want to, you can write. Oh, okay. Think about okay. and write for so us, please. It, I, I write, okay. 
Okay. Okay, I write. Okay, yeah. Talking, I I'm not very well. Okay, but okay. you are following this discussion. Then we can talk later. Okay. 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 Uh, and now Veronica, go on, Veronica. Uh, well, Anthony, I, I love this discussion. It was so clear and we have a lot of uh, things alike in Mexico and Africa because um, you said something, I, I was writing in the chats things you okay. said and uh, you said something about education is not um, a, the link with the real, the real uh, life of the people. The, mm -hmm. and then uh, we, we have the same in Mexico. Mexico is so big and we have different towns and different uh, little states and the people think different and you can have the same education from everybody the same. You need to have uh, to know which is the culture of these little places and which are the problems of these little places. And you touch the, the thing. The thing is how they can use the education to change their own um, lives. And this is the meaning of education. You said so right, because we are trying to do the same. Uh, uh, teachers are trying to do the same in their own um, schools how to solve how to solve those problems of those little places uh, with the um, the innovation or with the uh, talent we are looking for the talents of every place every little place have a lot of talent why don't we use this this is the meaning why we can use the talent of everybody solving their own problems. This is a, a real uh, challenge. Yeah, beautiful. Um, Veronica, yes. Um, we, I've been, uh, I've been um, some kind of a renegade. I don't know, I, I have some published works. On, on economics and development. But you see, it intersects with education. That's why we're here. And um, you know, sometimes I'm a bit embarrassed, embarrassed to say this, but you know, let's, let me say it and let's all learn. Uh, in 2017, I, I was invited to speak to university students uh, in Nigeria. And um, I, asked, I asked them to, I asked randomly, it was on self-development. That was what I was supposed to self, developing yourself to contribute positively to your economy. And I asked them, I, I brought about some psychological questions about uh, a Niger an African shirt and a European shirt, an African shoe, and an European shoe. And uh, what was it again? And I said an African TV and an European TV and an African cell phone and a new phone. And I said, what's better? Which is better? And it was 100% of course the European uh, uh, products. So it was a test. So I said, okay, uh, an African poem and an European poem. Uh, an African uh, uh, drama, European drama. And then I said, which one is better? And they said, um, oh, uh, okay, the European. The European one is much, is much better. And this is in Africa. And I said, okay, who is uh, Winston Churchill? And everybody said, Winston Churchill is the prime minister of England between uh, 1939 and... And I said, okay, who is Sundieta Keta? And I said, who? And I said, Sundieta Keta. Okay, who's Sunni Ali? Who's Idris Aloma? And I said, we don't know. 
I said, that's the problem. You have no positive example. Your education, how are you going to go and build anything? How are you going to go and treat anybody when you have no positive example of yourself? And uh, I, 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 I am learning also, and I understood where the problem is. The, the, this is not only for Africa. This is for all developing nations. The issue is to connect the, ch the child's psychology to what he can do because he can do it and he knows he can do it because his people have done it before. If you can give the child confidence at any age that he can do something, he will, he will go to the moon. But for African development, the education is not helping the child to develop. I'm sorry, I'm a bit passionate about this, so I've, I've taken you somewhere else, but that's, that's, that's the, uh, that's why I'm happy to, to do this. And I, I understand your question. It's very valid to every country. I have a lot, a few more other things to say, but I, I will, uh, I'll say it as you ask the questions. And uh, I want to put something. It's it's a serious topic, but it, it's uh, it's. I don't want to be too uh, lectury or serious because there are a lot of positive things. I'm going to end up by listing a lot of positive uh, initiatives going on in Africa right now, which other people can learn. The African Development Bank is doing a lot. There are a lot of institutes coming up. And I'll list it out just before we close. Uh, I'd like to ask it to Adele, uh, that is from a different part of Africa, what he thinks about uh, what has been discussed until now and what would be his point of view, uh, including education. He that has been working at wonderful work with children, not only in Tunisia, where he lives, but in other countries too. Please, Adele. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It was really nice. And it's, it's always nice to, to hear some uh, point of view from uh, our continent. So the, the first point uh, I wanted to say about Africa, uh, I was in a camp uh, last uh, two weeks to teach African girls uh, coding. And I will tell you some stories about that because I had, for the first time, I had the opportunity to meet a lot of girls from a lot of different countries and to speak with them directly and have uh, real information. You understand where, where they live, how is the situation in their country, how is the level of education and so on. So the first point, uh, I mean, when I came back to Tunisia, I was always saying, you know, Africa is one continent, but we have a huge gap between uh, countries and inside even the countries itself. I mean, and you were speaking about uh, Nigeria and it's the same in a lot of countries. You, you have, we have, there is a huge gap between uh, countries and inside the countries, countryside and city side. So we, we need to fix this. So this is the first point. The, the, the second point is that uh, you, you, you were speaking about the quality of education. And I think the, with the coding movement, uh, we can fix this because when we teach uh, co uh, kids to program, uh, when I teach this, I, I say to them, we teach you to program, we, we, we want you to be creator of technology, not just a consumer of, of technology. And you were speaking about also the disconnection between the education and the reality of life. And I will give you an example, an interesting example uh, from the last uh, workshops in, in, in Ethiopia. And okay. I was teaching Internet of Things concept to girls. We were uh, doing like practical uh, workshops with, about Internet of Things. And among the things that we usually uh, do is to control things remotely over the Internet. Okay. So this is what I teach. Okay. So uh, after showing this example, I asked them, can you solve a community problem in, in your, uh, I mean, uh, with this technology, Internet of Things? They said, oh. It's very interesting, this concept, but we don't have internet in the countryside. How can you control uh, things uh, without internet, you say? They said, mm -hmm. I said, uh, what about using SMS? Do you have a phone and uh, can you use SMS? They said, oh, 
yes, we have SMS usually. I mean, it's not, pop I mean, you can't have it like 100% in all the countryside. There, there is uh, telecom, I mean, it's possible to send SMS or receive, but it's okay, it's better than the internet. And I teach them, uh, I was teaching them this, how to control things remotely with SMS. And by the end of the workshops, uh, we have to present like uh, projects and all the projects, they were controlling things with SMS on using texting uh, technologies to, to communicate. So I, I, it was really interesting for me because uh, to, to see that if you just give them the opportunity to think about the real life uh, problem uh, and yeah. give them different uh, strategies, they are able to, to, to find a solution that the others, they can't have. I mean, for me, uh, so... This is very interesting. <laughs> yeah, thank you, um, Adele. I agree with you. You're from Tunisia, so uh, we're from the same continent. I think you, I, don't, I wouldn't say you understand what I'm saying more, but I am sure with, especially with your experience from uh, Ethiopia, you, you, you are seeing what I said live, the disconnect between what we are educating and developing. But there is hope. Serious hope, which I'm sure you also experienced too. There. Can I Thank add you. something? Can I add something? Do you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. Um, I had the experience in India and Malaysia and uh, Thailand recently that even though the phone connectivity was not so good with the internet, in many public places there was free Wi-Fi. Yeah. So actually, the connectivity was not so bad. Yeah, it's, it's actually, I found it was quite good and usable anywhere. But what I also found at the same time is here in Austria and Europe, inside of schools, the internet was very bad. No Wi-Fi, very slow internet. So this is also a disconnect here between the reality of kids in private where they have internet without problems, and what is happening in schools, where the infrastructure is bad. Yeah? Just wanted to add from the European perspective. Eh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Beautiful. Um, yeah, the, it's, I never knew that. It's interesting to hear that. Um, and uh, it's... It's hope. I just want to hear people's questions. I have a lot of positive to say, but if I said the positive from the beginning, I, I wouldn't get the reaction I'm getting now. So I have said what, and I get the reaction, and I'll tell you a lot of positive things that are happening in Africa as well. But it's good to hear that. I wouldn't have never had known that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Veronica, I like your hat. Is it, is it Mexican? It's, it's I'm next. gonna see uh, if you see this is my hat when I use this in my workshop a maker maker workshops. It's oh, okay. uh, you see um, you have uh, toys toys, okay. but uh, but um, the meaning of this is you can be a creator only with these things. You can be the creator. And um, and what the the real thing is if you use your creativity, if you use your imagination, if you feel you are a potential genius, and uh, wow. this is the meaning. The meaning is how to make the people and your children feel good with them. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell something uh, I made uh, the last uh, workshop. It, it's, it's going to be interesting because I've never um, think it once uh, this is going to be okay. Um, I, I gave a workshop to girls from, from uh, high school and the, the first, uh, I, w I went to a school and the school has, uh, in, the, in the classroom where I'm going to be, uh, have my workshop, has a name. Uh, and I said, well, who's that woman's name? Uh, the name was Evelyn Vernice. And I, know, I never know about her. She was the mother 
of the um, process, text process, the word process. And uh, then I asked the, the girls, well, if you, uh, we are now in the room who the, the, has a name of a brilliant uh, woman, then I want you, uh, I know about her in Wikipedia, then I want you to put your own Wikipedia note from, not for now, from 20 years later, and they began to wrote about them of how they feel 20 years later. In the future, right. right. In the future, because the, the workshop, it's about uh, Mexicans in the future, uh, get okay. Mexican girls in the future. Then everyone uh, wrote about them, how was in the future, and it was a lovely, lovely, um, uh, work I have, and they they don't uh, write uh, they write it their own note, but another pe another uh, scholarship uh, classmate read about her, and it was uh, a good experience. Try okay. to do it. Thank you, Veronica Maria Beatrice. Beatrice yeah. wants to talk. Hey, uh, yeah, hey, I have some question. And um, uh, excuse me, uh, you told us that I don't know if, if I well understood. Sixty five percent are in the school. How, uh, I don't understand how many children are in the school attended the school in uh, Nigeria. Uh, okay, let's be, um, be specific. Because I I, that... yes, because I want to ask. How many yeah. uh, children are in the rural area that we go to school, and yeah. uh, how many girls? I can't find also in in uh, I think in internet, but I would like to if uh, we, we sure. Can Let's and ask also, him. He knows about that. Yeah, this is a specialist. Yeah. You have a specialist. <laughs> you call also, on. Yeah. Uh, uh, up to you. Uh, how many? Uh, how much it could be the cost of, um, of uh, maintaining a school, uh -huh. opening and maintaining a school in uh, Nigeria in dollars. And okay. uh, also, I, I want to say that in Europe, we study a lot of colonialism, imperialism, a lot, lot about uh, colonialism of uh, France and England. Not too much about China and Japan. We don't study China and Japan history. And I think that the Maghreb, uh, or North Africa, has a different kind of school because the school is from French system. No, is it, it Adel? It's a French system. It's completely different, I think, from the English system. I, I want to ask you which is the uh, referring curriculum in uh, Nigeria. I mean, it's English curriculum or something like in, like that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me be sure I got all your questions. Uh, Beatrice, Maria. Maria. Uh, you Maria. said Ma Maria. Sorry. Maria, um, sorry. How many students in school? Okay. I. Uh, there is uh, an organization called the African Development Bank, okay? Uh, this organization from the name, it has a very serious link in investing in, uh, in uh, African education, okay? And according to a recent research, which I participated in, only about, uh, only about um, 30 percent 30, 30, no, no, only about 33% uh, of children are in secondary schools. From the total population of children that should be entering secondary school, what we call secondary school here is high school in the, in the US. So, and, uh, so only 30%, I said that, I said that 65, that is six and a half out of 10 children, if you remember, are not in school. So 
that means 35% are in school. So I hope I answered the question. 35% of children across Africa, not just Nigeria, in general, I'm not sure whether that figure is correct for North, I'm not sure whether that figure is correct for North Africa. Uh, of children are in school, and that means 65% are not in school. Um, then how much would it take to, uh, to run a school in, in Nigeria or in Africa? That... Uh, sorry, is this is a problem in the microphone. My microphone? I don't know. Can you hear yes, me? Christoph, Anthony, oh, when happened? you did like this, your microphone went bad. <laughs> it's your microphone. I can okay. I I think there is a electronic electric problem. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Disconnect you your, me? please disconnect to your microphone and use the computer okay, microphone. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, cool. when you did like this, it disconnected. It went okay. Down. okay, you're back. Okay. Okay, so, um, Maria, you understood? Uh, according to a research I helped in doing, as an economist uh, for the African Development Bank. African Development Bank is a big, big institution here in Africa, uh, helping development. And according to recent research, as of 2000, December 2017, 35% uh, of children that are supposed to be in secondary, this is not primary, this is not tertiary, secondary schools, okay, intermediate school, only 35% of the children supposed to be in in, 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 in secondary schools are there. So the others are not there. And the others are 65% not having that education. Okay? Now, how uh, much does... Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, so they received yeah. uh, an education until uh, middle school? Yeah, yeah. Okay. They, 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 they came from <laughs> primary school, but they couldn't continue. 65% of them couldn't continue okay. to secondary. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. I have. I, I will give you some other figures on that. Um, but uh, le now the question of how much it will take to um, to run a school in Nigeria, in, in Africa, is it's a it's a massive question. It's massive, and it brings up it brings up in me a lot of a lot of answers and I have to be careful. I want to articulate them so I don't spend six hours explaining that question. You, you know, because it's what type of school? And is what the answer, the question, I mean, the answer to the question starts with a, to, with a question. What type of school do you want to, to bring up? Is it a school? I, I am more inclined that it is the cost will come from what type of education do you want to teach? What type of education is going to be taught in the school? And of course, we want the sciences. We want children to be exposed to the sciences. But you know what? I am one of those people, and this you will not hear it from many people in Africa. But Adele may support the, what I'm about to say. And I am saying that we in Africa need the kind of schools that will educate our children by leapfrogging. We need to use technology to leapfrog all the humanities and all the, uh, the colonial set curriculum into a designed curriculum where technology, uh, empowering technology allows the student to actually express him or herself. Now, this is very important and very innovative or radical because it means that what I am trying to say here now is that 
if I am to cost a school today, I am not costing the number of books in literature. I'm not costing the, of course, that, I'm not costing a normal book library. The library I'm talking about now will be an infotech library. The, the, the lab would be a biotech lab. I'm saying right at the age of secondary school. The, 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 the skills they, they would learn would be machinist skills. They will be coding skills. They would be artificial intelligence. They will be deep learning skills. So to answer your question, what would it cost? Well, then you, I've given you a description of the kind of school I'm talking about. That's truly, with all due respect, all humility, that's what's needed. Africa needs to catch up. And the only way you can catch up is to attempt to leapfrog. You uh, need to leapfrog. Anthony, uh, can... uh, yes? uh, Adele has a very good experience recently in Ethiopia. Uh, yes. So he has something to point out. Would you like to talk about this, Adele, please? No, it was just an example, actually, to be It's just an, uh, to, uh, an answer to Beatrice. In, in Ethiopia, uh, I asked about the schooling system, and uh, believe me, uh, I ver I, I'm sure about this information that it's a lot of uh, kids in the countryside, they, they never been at school, never. And the, the countryside in Ethiopia is like, I don't know, maybe 80% of the population. And uh, it's, it's a crazy uh, number, and, I, and the problem is, first, is that schools, they are really far from the country and they don't have a good network of, uh, of, of, of uh, primary school, uh, I mean, uh, primary uh, schools. The second point also is the quality of education. It's normal, that they told me that it's normal that at schools you, you will find, have a classroom of 60 kids in the same oh, classroom. Gosh. Can you imagine? Yes. And I asked about the other countries like Cote d'Ivoire and the others, and it seems to be like the normal uh, size of a, a, a classroom. Can you imagine 60 or 50 kids at the same time learning? So it was really, I mean, I was really surprised and uh, sorry for, for that. Just to, to let it's you know. Three times the recommended. Here we yeah. have 30 or 40 in private schools, private schools. <laughs> so yeah. it so so okay. uh, maria it's important to um, to understand that if you were to take this is important what adele has said it's correct and it adds to what i am saying but i i want to stress a very important point and for any developing country too if you were to take the best school in france are you from are you in france Maria, where I, are I you? I am Italian. I am Italian. I'm from Italy, okay. but I live in Sweden. Okay. <laughs> if you were to take the best school in Sweden, yeah, with the best laboratory, the best secondary school, best laboratory, best library, best classrooms, best internet, and you were to lift it from uh, Sweden and take it right to Ethiopia and drop it there it wouldn't achieve the result. Hello? It wouldn't, it wouldn't do anything. You yes. would be a good... You could you would... right, you know, I can prove that. I, I think <laughs> I understand. Yes, because here in Brazil, we have a big gap bef between public schools and private schools. The private schools are very, very, very expensive for a selective and small group. And they have all this kind of stuff, but they don't know how to use, even the teachers. So if you don't know how to use that, why to buy, how, 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 why, to, why to spend so much money? We see schools with a lot of technologies and the teachers are teaching scratch on the blackboard. <laughs> so what is that? So, even when we have money, even when we have technology, the, the, the stuff, all the stuff needed, laboratories. I, I teach all the subjects for 15 years with school problems. So I have this uh, vision 
uh, among the subjects and the whole school, not only math or physics, but uh, sciences, history, ge geography, things like that. So we see very expensive schools with huge laboratories, microscopes, better than they, at, they have at the university, for example. But when I start teaching uh, about the membrane, the cell membrane, and they have to learn a 15 years old girl or boy, they have to learn about the seven functions of the membrane protein of the cell. Why? <laughs> and when we have to make them understand this because at school even though the parents pay a lot of money to learn they just don't know and then when we start for example teaching about the cell before saying about before saying something about the membrane or the proteins of the membrane uh we, we ask have you ever seen a cell on the microscope no they have huge laboratories. No, we don't have time to go to the laboratory. So yes. but, that's but, what, but, exactly uh, what we're saying. Does, you, even if you take this, the laboratory, put in Ethiopia, here's not Ethiopia. We have the laboratories and you don't well use them. But it, so it, it, well, it, where's the problem? <laughs> Anthony. No, yeah. Eloisa, I, I'm talking more, I, in fact, about primary school, because I think in the rural area, there are lots of children they can, cannot uh, allow it, uh, or cannot, uh, not able to go in the school, to the school, I think. So, I mean, how much it could be the cost in, a, in the rural area for, a, it's, it's about, it, the cost is interesting for me, because I'm thinking how Europe can invest, could invest in Nigeria. You know, I know, I know very well the, the, how Nigeria uh, has been exploited from European. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, I, I want to answer you, Maria, but Heloisa can... Um, uh, Austria, oh my God, where is it? Where is my friend? Yeah. Yeah, it just says you. I saw you saying something. I want to hear from you. Then I'll answer you, Maria. I have something interesting I'd like to share with everybody. But say something, please, sir. Thank you. Yes. So we did many projects for many years with schools, and I guess everyone has experience from their own school time. There are some very good teachers, and most of the teachers are average, and there are maybe a few bad ones. The good teachers, fantastic, huh? and I also agree with the, you know with what you were selling, uh, saying Eloisa, about the cells. You have that same thing in many fields, like in, for instance mathematics. Most of the kids learn so much mathematics, and they hate it unless they have some very good teachers, and you know that's a huge waste of time. So I'm coming back now to, to what I actually wanted to say is we tried so many things with scratch and with uh, pocket code with teachers and schools. And it works very nicely when you have good teachers on the other side. But only then. It doesn't work with average teachers. It doesn't work, of course, with the bad teachers. And even the very good teachers maybe have different interests and maybe they have a lot of curriculum that they have to cover. So, I also talked with Nick from the tech team and he also agreed uh, about something interesting that we also found. It. Whenever we do something with school, the amount of inappropriate content that is uploaded to the Scratch website or to our website increases incredibly compared to when we do something with private kids. So the private kids, they do something that they are really interested in. But as soon as it is something they have to do in school, and they 
somehow maybe the environment is not perfectly ideal because the system is not so good or somehow eh, it deteriorates. So after all these years of doing things with schools and trying to motivate teachers to do something with us, etc., etc., and finding how really hard and difficult it is, we found that it's so much easier to work with private kids instead of doing things through school. The, the amount of work that is necessary to do something that scales up with schools is really incredible. It's much easier to reach the kids themselves. So this is what we now decided for our project. We try to do things with kids, personal kids, maybe afternoon you know, clubs and such things. But we, we de emphasize a whole work with school. If there is a good teacher who wants to take it up, perfect. But we don't, you know, we don't try to do anything because forcing it through the school, there's so much opposition, especially in our case, because we additionally we rely on the phones, which are something that is you know bad for school. So but even with scratch, that it, it makes just huge problems. It's much easier and, and better, I feel. Uh, that's my opinion from my experience. It's easier to do things with, with bypassing school uh, without the school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Wolfgang, I agree. So, in addition to what Wolfgang has said, and Maria, if I was asked, and believe me, I have been asked in my consultancy, people have called me in Zurich and said, How can we help Africa? We listened to you talk, we've read some of your papers. Okay, we want to invest. And uh, what do we do? And my answer to the question, what can we, what you can do is, it's as follows. You know, I was writing it down while you were talking. It's very simple. If I was going to ask, if I was asked that somebody should invest in Africa to help Africa education, it wouldn't be to build a traditional school. It would be, let us teach the children how to think. Let us teach the children how to learn. I am here today because my father, a diplomat, an ambassador, taught me how to learn. That's really what he gave me. I can learn, I can, I can speak on any subject. I can, I can speak on ancient history. I can speak on artificial intelligence because I know what to do. I know how to research a subject. I know how to pick up the books. I know where to find the information. I know where to analyze the information. I know how to analyze the information. I know how to get findings. And therefore, I learned, I learned from them. That's what's needed for African development. Not only African development, any development. Teach the people how to learn. It doesn't matter whether they're living in huts. Don't look. It's not the structure. It's not the the school bell or the school facility, it's what you're teaching. They could be in the desert in tents and you will be doing much better for them by teaching them how to learn than giving them air-conditioned rooms and the best laboratory. So that's what I would no, say. No, no, uh, Anthony, I don't, I don't talk about laboratory. I've got teachers, you know. And in yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have any teacher, you can't yeah. learn anything. I mean, I, I, I think some teacher you need. It's so not the only, so, only for uh, I oh. think he, he understood you. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Understood, I, I understood what, what, do you, what do you mean. Oh, yeah. What you mean. So, what you mean. Okay. So if we teach them to learn, then we're okay. But this is another part of it. In the process of teaching them how to learn, let us not be afraid to teach them how to take control of their immediate environment. That's the trick. Oh, is it a trick? That's what I have experienced. The immediate environment may be huts and agricultural land, no electricity. I think the education in each community should be focused on teaching them how to dominate their environment. The rest will come. 
the rest will come. Once they, they learn how to dominate the environment by giving themselves power, by giving them, after a few years, they will begin to look for the luxuries. And they, they will be what I call well-educated uh, people. I believe, uh, if I can share, there's a, there's a paper I wrote in 2000 and uh, I think 16, the UN, UN, develop, no, UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, it's success, I will share it in the group, right? Uh, the success of the UN Development Goals depends on the success in Africa. And what I was trying to say is, let's not be afraid to just be very simplistic in this idea. There are problems in Africa, teach the children, to dominate the problems. Everything else will come from there. The children will dominate the problems when they've dominated water, they've dominated electricity, they've dominated building technology. The next thing they'll begin to say, oh, we would like a TV. The luxuries will come and they would, the economies will grow. I believe that if, if, if we follow this, teach them how to think, teach them how to learn step by step, teach them to dominate their environment. I believe that if this formula is, I'm being simple here, if this formula is followed, I believe the world in the next decades, underdeveloped countries will improve by at least 39%. And I'm not just believing it, my statistics shows it. Very simple. And like Maria said, it, it's part of it. Part of it is the teachers. Not everybody knows how to teach a child how to learn. Many yeah. teachers know how to teach a subject, but many teachers don't know how to teach a child how to learn. From the little experience I have here, I have met some people that my psychology tells me, and from what they've said, tells me that they know. Veronica sounded like somebody that knows how to teach a child how to learn. Uh, Adele, sound, just from my communicating with them a little. And I'm saying strongly, but humbly, if we teach the child how to learn step by step together and how to learn how to dominate his environment, many underdeveloped countries would not be underdeveloped in about a decade or so. Okay, thank you, Anthony. Uh, I, I'm I'm afraid that we are much over time, oh. but I would like to to before we finish, we'd like not to to lose this moment because I feel that we have so much more to discuss. I would like to invite everybody to keep on alive in this this discussion and wonder how can we uh, maintain these connections? Maybe as Lula suggests, if she's going to prepare a class and we could collaborate, who, I, I don't know, we could talk and <laughs> keep this discussion on. Uh, we, I created a, a small group um, in Facebook. Besides no, the messenger, no. besides the messenger, I create a group. So we have many uh, channels for communication. So people who want to share uh, links for anything, we can put in all these channels and we can go on with this discussion. Okay, so let's uh, um, yeah, uh, Beatrice is talking about Slack. We are trying many other channels. Nobody want ever. We are still in transition. We are trying many channels of communications because people doesn't have Slack or doesn't have WhatsApp or doesn't have Messenger or don't have, use Facebook, or just want to talk using emails. So I'm always using all of them 
making sure that everybody has this information. So feel free to inform everything in all these channels. I'm in charge to put it till we feel comfortable to use just one channel. So I ask for patience if we don't use all the, if we still don't have a perfect channel of communication, but we have human power and we have this uh, uh, ability of going after people and making everybody together. So it doesn't matter if it's Slack or this or this, we are very free and democratic group. So feel free to send your messages, your communications, um, people want to talk about microbit or them, anything. So uh, I'd like to ask you, Antonio, to share this, this statistics or this stuff, or even yeah, I will, your paper, it, if you could, please. So, yeah, I will post the paper in 24 hours. I'll look for it. It's on LinkedIn. I'll take it from LinkedIn and I'll put it here. And uh, some other things that answer many of the questions and topics here in more in depth, I will I'll post all of them. Where do I post them? In the general website? Where, yes, you where can post post in, in, on Facebook. Facebook uh, okay. So the others who haven't, everybody is there. So it's open for everybody. Uh, okay. And. And let's talk later about this idea. Uh, Lula told us about present something for the children. Yeah. And also, I'd like to invite Wolfant, Wolfant, <laughs> to talk mm -hmm. the next the next time to talk to present his work and talk a little about his wonderful project that has spread in so many countries already. And share with us his big experience, not only as a specialist, but this vision that we know that he already has. Okay, uh, any final considerations, Sandy, that would... Yeah, I left for so long, so I missed a bit, so... But I just wanted to thank Anthony. Uh, it was great, very interesting, very enlightening. And um, when you, and my only my final thought, the thing that resonated with me the most is when we were talking about the equipment and having the devices, even in the remote and the teachers. It's essentially for me. How do I want to put this? <laughs> you can have a. This is what I'm always fighting. That's my fight at school. I am, I deal, you have a curriculum. We, and I have to teach to a, a test that more or less our evaluations are best based on tests and how our kids score on tests. So I'm always bucking the system because I'm trying to explain to them that kids with the, you know, just rote memorizing. They're not learning. They're not learning to think. They're memorizing to take a test. And that is an issue, I don't know, at least in my country. That is the huge, we're, we're graduating kids that can't think. And what they memorize, so that's, so, I mean, I'm in a school now that has devices. I have 30 iPads, I have 30 laptops, I have one for each kid. But I'm looking at teachers that are not using these devices not they're using them in a passive way they're expecting me to teach kids how to use a device but not how to create with the device so that's really the message it's a grassroots and i feel like we're all kind of it's it that's i think that it doesn't regardless of what country you're in that's the that's where we need to go is getting our kids to be able to create you know so that's what i was thinking about while i was listening um, especially when we were talking about, you know, these big fancy schools, it doesn't matter. It matters what you're doing with what you have. That's it. <laughs> That's just my thoughts. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. I, I, I want to say the, the last, um, I think the, the meaning of this 
session is learn to learn with attitude. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can, and yeah, yeah. Learn how to learn, learn how to think for yourself, learn how to learn and, and tackle your environment. Everybody, once you start tackling your environment, everything goes from there. You dominate it and you dominate it and, and domination of your environment will lead to affluence and luxuries later. And that's development. You keep on developing as you learn. This was fantastic, though. I, I really, um, Heloisa, thank you. Wonderful people. Maria, Sandy, look at Wolfgang. Wolfgang uh, Wolfgang's project, then Lula, then, wow, come on. I like this. I didn't know you existed till Heloisa told me. <laughs> Adele, so, how are you? This is a very special group, we didn't. <laughs> so, and we are all together now. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm going to be more active. I will send as much. And I'll ask questions. Don't be surprised that I'll ask you a question. Sandy, Maria, I'll just send a question. Adele, I'll say, what do you think about this? I guess that's the essence. Uh, Wolfgang, I'll ask you more information about your project. And we move forward. Okay. I'm really grateful. I'm honored. Thank next, you. Uh, next session, Wolfgang will be the presenter, so he will be attracting uh, a lot of interesting people too. Yeah. So we can go on in this discussion because the sessions is not only for presenters. It's in, uh, in this easy going way. So just to to promote this discussion, that is the richest part of it. Uh, lectures and classes we have a lot on YouTubers but these we don't have so let's take advantage I ask you for helping to keep this alive to keep this ongoing uh, going on and um, that's it so Adele thank you very much for your time Wolfgang, Beatrice oh, I love you all so, thank you Let's well, say goodbye and mute everybody. Mute. Thank you. Bye. God bless you. And God bless you. Special thanks to Anthony who gave us a very special point of view and made us yeah. learn a lot of a uh, lot of things today. And so welcome to the group. <laughs> and I, I hope that you like it. And I do, I do, I do. And I do. Straight in, stick with us, okay? I will, I will. You can Thank be you. sure. Thank you. next week, okay? Your presentation. Bye, bye everyone. God bless you. Yes. Good day. Good day. Good day. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, bye. bye bye. Download bye -bye. Pocket Code into your tablet. Pocket Code next week with both of us. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. I love that. Thank you. Bye, Thank you. Bye. Bye.